uh, we are now leaving Nagator Beach and going to Palalem. But it's a long, long ride. There's five buses that we're going to be switching from, and then there's. Okay, speed bump. Hopefully, I don't have to go to the bathroom. We are now in Palalem, and we are walking to the family's little group of huts that I always stay at. Hopefully they're going to have a decent first room for us. Because there's rumors that all the rooms are like 800 rupees and whatnot. Not in our budget. You didn't qualify what price it was when you made the reservation? I did, but the English wasn't very good. Rosie! Hello! How are you? This is my husband, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Good to see you. Go. Huh? So Larry, tell us about your flight. My body just decided to do a massive purge on everything that I had in it, on both ends, all night long. He barely made it out of the hut. When it's coming out of both ends, that usually means food poisoning. So I think I got food poisoning. It's a little bit of mystery of what's made him sick. He had a chicken sandwich for breakfast. Could have been that. I didn't have any of the chicken sandwich. The irony being that the two meals we ate yesterday were both at high-end tourist restaurants. And that I ate street food for a week and I didn't have that happen. Moral of the story is, is that we went to the restaurant that no one was in. <laughs> That's kind of an indicator, I think. It's just... Oh, I sharded on the sheet because everything is liquid. Oh, I need to lay down. I was a baby in India and so my stomach tends to hold up really well. I can eat the same food at the same restaurant and that person will be puking up green and I'll have a little itty bitty itty bitty to my egg, so. It's a beautiful day and I'm gonna put some clothes on and maybe go wash our poop sheet. I came here, I got sick twice in about a week and a half with food poisoning, and I haven't shot anything since then. <laughs> Before I quit my job, I had a physical, got my vaccinations for coming here to India. He said I needed to get some blood work done to check my cholesterol because I shouldn't have elevated blood pressure. Me being the big fat chicken and hating needles, I uh, never got the blood drawn and my insurance expired when I quit. So now we're in India and we're going to the hospital to get my blood drawn because I finally took that long to screw up my courage in order to do it. Granted you would have been a lot better off with the needle in the US than here, but... You think they were using needles? I hope they use good needles, but it's much more of a gamble here. Um, barefoot because in this hospital you leave your shoes at the door. So now I'm waiting about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to have my blood pressure from walking 45 minutes to drop down. And then we'll take the blood pressure and then we'll see what's up. <sighs> Oh, uh, okay, well, after walking 45 minutes and then laying for 10 on a bed, my blood pressure went down to 130 or 80. I have no idea why my blood pressure was elevated in the States. Chances are it'll probably have gone down even farther if I had continued to wait around for it to go down farther. The whole of the consultation and everything, I mean, what, it's 300 rupees, which is about six dollars. So if you need medical attention in uh, Halloween, come to this hospital. I mean, if you don't need medical attention. Yeah, if you don't need medical attention. <laughs> So one of the things that I've learned in the month that we've been gone is that knowing how to navigate the transportation system in the country that you're in is a very important thing. But it also means a lot of going from place to place to place to place to figure out what the hell you're doing. Today we're going to the train station, which was three kilometers? You could take a rickshaw if you're lazy. You could rent one of these. 
and have that with you for the day. Or you can do what we're doing, which is the cheapest way, which is walk. We're choosing to walk because we haven't gotten much walking in for the training for the trek that we're going to be doing in <laughs> Nepal for 35 days. To Margoa to Amnaba? Yes, we want to go from, can I book the ticket from here? No, I have to book the ticket in Margoa. Oh my goodness. <sighs> so what's the story? <laughs> The story is, they only do train bookings for this train station here. So we would only be able to leave Wednesday if we would like to leave Wednesday. Otherwise, we have to go to Margoa and book the ticket, or we have to book it through a travel agency in town. A travel agency is going to charge more. Okay, so now we walk back. Now after we walk not, back. After not getting <laughs> anything done. Such is the nature of India. It takes, I'd say, on average, at least five times as long to get anything done right down to sending stuff through the mail. No parking. See, the interesting thing is India has laws and many of them are enforced mainly when it serves to pay the police officers bribes. On a plane coming over from the US to India, I was sitting next to this low-level government official. The low-level government official had just been to the US for the first time. He was just fascinated and he had all these questions to ask me. One of them was, how had people learned to stop and help when they saw an accident? Then he asked me, where do you learn to tell the truth? What? And I said, well, you know, theoretically, as a small children, you were taught that it's very bad to tell a lie and it's very important to tell the truth. And then he asked me, why is it that you don't pay bribes? And in all fairness, you know, our politicians get huge bribes. They just get them in a way that's legal. <laughs> Campaign fund endorsements and yeah. shit like that. <laughs> you could say it's almost a disadvantage because only the obscenely rich get to pay bribes to get the government that they want. However, the poor people can't, like, bribe the police to get out of trouble like you can here. <laughs> So, you know, pick your system. If you get caught for an offense, you're better off just paying the bribe and get out of it. And if you have a moral hesitation to that, it clearly shows that you've never spent time in a third world jail. <laughs> oh. oh, she's got a lot of tattoos. And I wouldn't be surprised if she got some of those tattoos while she was here. Anyways, she got laid last night, by the way. Yeah, the shack walls are thin. One of the more common things for people to do when they are uh, backpacking is to get tattoos from strange places. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so seeing as tattoos are a very common practice for people who are backpacking, I was suggesting that we get ta uh, tattoos. No. Yes, no. and we were talking about different types, and I came up with the idea that I have no. um, tab A written on my junk. Um, and then next to her, you know, she gets slot B. Let's just say that needles aren't very clean at home, even you run the risk of getting certain kinds of hepatitis. There's no vaccination for that? No vaccination for hep C. So, if you want to get a tattoo, do it at your own risk. Luckily, I have a phobia of needles. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> We're trying to get our train tickets. We're gonna try to find a travel agency that doesn't charge outrageous commission to get our train tickets. That usually means going to several. Now what would outrageous be? I'm feeling like it should be under 100. We're trying to get our asses back to Delhi. Yo. Whoa. Means they have to go here to Delhi for 100 rupees. 100 rupees, 40 feet. Right, so it's the ticket is to Delhi, but I have to change trains. So is it then 200 or is it 100? Yeah, 200. Good discount. <laughs> that might be just the standard that they're all going to do, but it comes out to an extra 400 rupees for us to get our tickets up to Delhi. How much was it from Delhi to here? We went and booked our train tickets ourselves, so we didn't have to pay. This is round two? Okay. How much commission do you charge to the train ticket? We want to go this train from Marco to Amnabha. It's all part of the same ticket because we're trying to get to Delhi, but we have to do the train change in Amnabha. It only took us two rounds. But we saved 100 rupees for going to them. So we saved. We saved, I think, more than that because we got in and out. He was smarter than me, so 
who pay 150 commission and then um, instead of if I was trying to do it my way we would pay 400 commission. As you can tell I'm lost. I'm just going where she says to go. Be persistent. Keep going. Don't go with the first one you, uh, you see. And don't feel bad about walking out of the place. <laughs> That's the bathroom. So, since we chose the hut that has no bathroom built into it, these are the actual bathrooms. A shower. This one is a toilet and a shower. I just went to the bathroom and there was poop on the seat. I'm telling you, somebody, you went in the middle bathroom or the... No, the private one. The private so I know who it is. It's the Russian guy. You can't flush it. I pushed the button and I like held it for 20 seconds and it's, they were still like floating on the top. It's like he... Yeah, it's like he uh, CO2 injects his poop. No, but there's only three of us using that bathroom. And I know you're not leaving poop on the seat. You get mad at me if I don't flush my pee. <laughs> so that gets me out of it, huh? It doesn't look like yours anyways. I can't believe this is the topic of conversation that, that I'm that filming you're choosing to record. For posterity's sake. Uh-oh, where did Larry's sandals go? Somebody stole them. What happened? I left them in the internet shop right next door last night because I was so used to walking around without them. And uh, I just got them yesterday and they're going, people take shit around here like that. Well, they're also a brand new pair of sandals, yeah. so... Yeah, 250 rupees. Alright, let's... Wanna go eat? Valuable travel lesson learned today is, um... Don't squat and fart. You lose a pair of underwear over it? Well, you know, the thing is they were white underwear, too. So the good thing is I knew the damage had been done. That's great. $85 for three weeks to stay on a tropical beach. It's towards the end of the season, so they're more willing to bargain. We don't have a bathroom in our unit. An extra $3 a day, you get a bathroom. How much do you think we're spending a day? We are eating very well and we're spending under $20 a day. Under $20 a day for two people. So that's... Including internet. You can go cheaper than that. We've been kind of like overdoing it since this is what I count as the vacation portion of the trip. Staying on the tropical beach and not doing anything for three weeks. Which is about to be followed by the whirlwind sightseeing. Which will be followed by the working our asses off the For a month, over a month. Yeah. But anyways. It's a lot for Indian food, but considering that it's 50 rupees to the dollar right now, a little over a dollar for a main course meal. You get between, you know, your meals somewhere between one and four dollars, depending on what you order and if you get drinks, obviously it's more. But yeah. I think we've been doing pretty good. Last day, Kyle and Kita and I are here on the beach, um, and this is the sunset here. And there's something that I wanted to do correctly that I did not get a chance to do correctly the first time I did it. So, Kita, um, unfortunately, I'm holding a camera, <laughs> and my hand is full. It's gone. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Kita, there. Okay. No, you're not supposed to look at the camera and cry. <laughs> I love you. You're absolutely perfect for me. And I would love it if you would um, be with me forever. Can you marry me? Wait, you didn't say yes. <laughs> I have nothing to say. Your finger. Uh, wait. <laughs> this is difficult. Okay. Let's see. Uh, that that that's the the finger. That's the original ring, and then the the one we got here. 
she picked it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bargain. <laughs> it suits me as it suits my nature. <laughs> I love you. And